Hi everybody, we are going to do lab number four, physical and chemical changes. I'm sorry that we don't get to do this together in class with our hybrid schedule, um, but next best thing, you're going to watch me do it and you're going to record the data uh, while I do it. I am uh, walking through procedures beginning on page 46 and I'd like you to follow along with me um, as if you're doing this experiment with me and then you are going to record the data on page 53. So if you wanna put a little sticky note uh, put your finger there. Uh, we're going to go back and forth between the experiment and then recording the data. Okay, um, so I'm on page 46. I'm looking at solution formation. It's part A. It says procedure number one. It says weigh out two samples of sodium chloride. So I've done that. There's um, 0.2 grams of sodium chloride in each of these little test tubes. Um, and then it says, test the sample in one tube um, as follows. Moisten the end of a clean stirring rod with distilled water. So I've done that. I'm going to wet my stirring rod and then I'm dipping it in one of the test tubes. Um, then it says, um, put the stirring rod with salt crystals in the flame of your burner. I have a Bunsen burner right here. So we're going to start the Bunsen burner. We haven't got to do this before. What I do is I slowly turn on the gas. I have my, oh, something really important. Um, whenever you use a burner, make sure that you pull your hair back. You don't want to accidentally lean into the flame and ignite your hair would not be good. So good safety, pull your hair back. Um, okay, so I slowly turn on the gas and I listen for the gas. Okay, I can hear the gas and then I light it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we've got our Bunsen burner uh, going. I have the saw on the end and you want to carefully watch, you're looking for the color. What is going to be the color when I put the salt in this flame? So here we go. Oh, that's a brilliant yellow. Nice, nice. It's actually the sodium ion is what turns yellow. Isn't that cool? Woohoo! It's just fun doing that. Let's record that. So I'm going to put this off to the side. Um, if you will please go to uh, page 53, it says color the flame, original solid. You're going to put down yellow. I'm going to write that as well. We'll, we'll do this together. So that was a yellow flame. Okay, uh, next it says note the color and record under solid original. Number four, it says test the remaining solid in the test tube as follows. Add 20 drops of distilled water and agitate the tube. Um, so let's take my distilled water. Here's my distilled water. And I have a dropper. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to count 20 drops of water. Okay. So we put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Great. Okay, so to shake this around, let it all dissolve. I had a little bit on the edges of the test tube. Okay, so shaking, and it is getting clear as I'm shaking it. I'll keep shaking that for you. Um, so we add the distilled water. Now it says add more water drops if needed. No, it's dissolved, we're good to go. Now it says to add two drops of silver nitrate. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down. I'm going to set my water off to the side with its dropper and I'm going to get the silver nitrate. This is silver nitrate. Okay, here's our silver nitrate. I'm going to get a dropper for this. So here's a dropper for silver nitrate. And we're going to put, it says two, two drops. Okay, so here we go. One. Oh man, that turned fast. Two. So that, you can see the white. Let me, um, I'm going to use my iPad. Look how white that is. Wow, it went from clear, I mean, it just looked like clear water to white. So let's record that, let's record that. Let's go back to page. I'm going to set my silver nitrate off to the side. There we go. Let's go back to page 53. And it said, result of adding silver nitrate to the dissolved sample. Um, it was white. It was a white precipitate is what that's called. Nice. Uh, 
Okay, now number five. It says dissolve the second sample of sodium chloride in water by adding 20 drops. Okay, let's do it. I'll get my distilled water again. Here's my second sample of sodium chloride. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so let me shake that for you. We're going to let that dissolve. Um, now it says to agitate the test tube until it dissolves. Number six, recover the dissolved solid from the solution by evaporating away the water. Okay, and this can be done. You can see the model. It can be done by tilting the test tube gently in the heating. Um, so great, it's clear. In fact, let me show you with my iPad again. You can see it's clear. Yeah, it's not white at all like that other one. It's clear. I'm going to use my test tube holder right here and then I'll pull the flame. Okay, good, you can see the flame. I'm going to put uh, the flame at an angle and I can start to see some condensation on this. And we have to wait for that to evaporate. Starting to boil. It's heating up pretty fast. Very cool. You can probably see the steam coming out of it. Oh, and interesting, it's starting to get kind of a white foam around the bottom. So cool. Check that out, you guys. Let me show you again. So that is white. Wow. Look at that, how white that is. Uh, so we recovered the solid. Remember, I put I had the sodium chloride in it, dissolved it in water, heated it up. Um, it says, touch a small portion of the recovered solid in the flame using the storing rod. So I'm going to set this gently. There we go. In my test tube rack. And I'm going to go back to my stirring rod. I'm going to rinse off my stirring rod first just to make sure that I don't have any of the salt from the first trial. Okay, so that's rinsed off. Now, you've got to be so careful. Hot glass looks the same as cold glass. That glass is definitely still hot, so I'm not going to touch it. And when I put my stirring rod in here, I'm going to touch some of this white that's on here. Okay, so some of the white stuck to it. Not a lot, but some of it. Let's see if I can get more in there. Okay. Um, and then it says, um, put it in the flame. So let's see if we get that same yellow color. Let's look. There it is, beautiful yellow, woohoo. So what does that tell us? It tells us it's sodium chloride. Even though I dissolved it in water, uh, when I removed the water, it didn't change. Um, and so it would be considered a physical change. I was able to reverse it. I had the sodium chloride back. Nice, so let's go back to our data table. Um, the recovered solid is indeed yellow, still yellow. Uh, let's see what our next part says. Now it says number eight. Test the remainder of the recovered solid in the test tube by following the directions given on step four. So on step four, we had to add the water and then we added the silver nitrate. Now I'm still going to use my um, test tube holder because that glass is still going to be hot. Let's go ahead and add 20 drops of water. One, oops. I had a little squirt there. Okay, that's going to be 20 drops. <laughs> I'm going to swirl that around. Still have kind of some up on the edge there. And now I'm going to add, let me set this down, I need to open the silver nitrate. Um, now I'm going to add the two drops of the silver nitrate. Okay, remember last time it was white. I mean like crazy fast, thick white. Here we go. One, Two. Yep, sure enough, there it is. And we have this beautiful white precipitate. Just so you know, that precipitate is silver chloride. Kind of neat. Look at that. Look how white that is against the, the red. Okay, let's record that. We are going to have on page 53 where it says result of adding silver nitrate from the recovered solid. It's also white which tells us is another confirmation that that was sodium chloride. It underwent a physical change. It didn't chemically change when I dissolved it in water. Okay, good. 
Um, so now we're going to go to part B. It says heating copper carbonate. Weigh out two samples of solid copper carbonate. Here it is. Oh, you guys, I'm. it's a beautiful green color. Let me hold this up. I'm hoping that you can see that. You can see this green color. It's a green color. If you can zoom in on your screen, it's a really, really pretty green. Maybe if I put it against the board, you can see it with the white. There's a really pretty green. Oh, there you go. You can see it. It's a really pretty green color. It's like a sea foam green. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's copper carbonate. Um, I weighed out 0.1 grams, put those in two different test tubes. Um, it says tap the top of the, or the test tubes on the bench top so that sample clinging to the sides can fall to the bottom. I did have a little bit cling to the sides. So I'm just tapping. Okay, looks like most of it went to the bottom there. Um, it says test the sample in one test tube by adding 15 drops of dilute six molar hydrochloric acid. Don't be fooled by that word dilute. Here, six molar HCl can still do serious damage. You are always respectful of acids and bases. They are highly corrosive. So it says dilute. Yes, is it dilute by 50%? Yes, but it can still do considerable damage. Okay, I'm going to get a new little pipette for my hydrochloric acid. Um, and it wants us to put 15 drops. Let me open this. Uh-oh, gotta use muscles, you guys. Let me undo the tape on this. Nice. Now I can open it. There we go. Okay. So I've got my pipette. And we're going to drop 15 drops of 6 molar HCl. The molar just means concentration. We'll talk more about that in the year. Here we go. One, ooh, two, three. Okay, that was 15. Oh. I hope you can hear that. It's fizzing. Oh, and look at that. Look at that green. Completely liquid. And it was fizzing. Yeah, definitely reacted. Beautiful green color. Let's record that. Now I'm going to set my hydrochloric acid over here. We well, have some distance between our acid and everything that we're doing. Um, so let's record that. I'm going to go to table 4.3. Oh, so pretty. I had to show you that one more time. So pretty. Okay, I'm on page 53 and we're on table 4.3. Sample color is green. Unheated, it is green. And the result of adding the HCl is still green. It's maybe a little more green. Um, this, this is kind of a seafoam greenish. This is like a Kelly green. It is like the green inside of a graph, inside of grass. Um, okay, now I think we're supposed to heat this. Let's go back to part B and we are on step four. It says mount the other test tube on the ring stand as shown in figure 4.4 and heat the sample very strongly. So I have what's called a test tube clamp. Here is the sample I haven't done anything with and remember how it's green. You can see that green right there. I am going to slip this over, put my test tube in the test tube clamp, secure it. Nice. And then what you do is you put, there we go, the Bunsen burner right underneath that. And I'm going to time that with my iPad for five minutes. Clock starts. Okay, so we got five minutes on the iPad. Um, it says that we need to heat this for five minutes and then allow the test tube to cool for 10 minutes. Record the color of the heat um, afterwards. So. Let's jump back to table 4.3 on page 53, where it says um, the unheated sample. Oh, great, it's green, never mind, sorry. Let's see. Um, okay, 
Wonderful. I'm just going to let that heat for the, um, the five minutes and cool, and then we'll come back to it, okay? So we don't waste any time. Let's go ahead and, and move on to part C, and then we'll, we'll come back to this. So part C, it says, place approximately 1 point, or 0 0.1 grams of solid iron chloride, that's FeCl3, or they really should have said iron three chloride, uh-oh, we caught them, into each of the two dry test tubes. So here's iron chloride. Iron chloride is yellow. I'm hoping you can see that yellow color right there. It's yellow. Yeah, it's a yellow color. So there's our iron three chloride. Um, add three dro 30 drops of distilled water um, to one of the solid samples prepared in step one. So let's get our distilled water and count 30 drops. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. Okay. So you can see the yellow. There's that yellow color. Okay, I'm trying to rotate it, hoping that you can see that yellow color. Really pretty. Let's record that. So we are going to be now on page 54. And the color of this solution is yellow. So let's write down yellow. Yellow. And now I'm going to come back to my part C. I did my 30 drops. We dissolved it. Um, now it says put 10 drops of the solution prepared in step two into each of two other test tubes. So I got two other empty test tubes prepared for us. Here they are. And I'm going to get another pipette, a clean pipette. We're going to do 10 drops into each of these other test tubes. Let's see here. Can I get that? That, oh, that didn't help me pull that up. Do you know what? The test tube is longer than my pipette. Oh, I'm going to be creative. Sorry, you guys. Nope, it's not going to let me do that. Sorry, we have to divide this into thirds in essence. I might just eye it, you guys. I apologize that that pipette isn't long enough. Um, so we are going to pour 10 drops into that one. And then we're going to pour 10 drops into this one. So I have three test tubes total. that have 10 drops. So there's three test tubes and they all have that yellow. They all have the yellow at the bottom. The iron three chloride. Okay, so we did that. Um, we are now on step four. It says add two drops of a 0.1 molar silver nitrate solution to one test tube, mix well, record the results. Okay, so let's take this test tube as 10 drops of the iron three chloride and we're going to add two drops okay so let's see what happens two drops one two Ooh, interesting it is a creamy yellow now so instead of being clear yellow it's an opaque yellow that you can't see through it let me let me show you with the background, the red background again. I hope you can see the difference. So as you're looking at it, it's going to be what your left, that one right here, this one on this side, you can see that it has some, uh, it's opaque. You can't see through it. But this one on your right, it's yellow, but you can see through it. You can see through to the, the red background. Oh, I just heard the timer go off, you guys. I am going to remove the heat. <gasps> oh, naughty. It must have been from the heat that the glass shrunk just a tiny bit. So glad that didn't break. I want to get my little test tube tong here. Pick that up. All right, there we go. And we have to let this cool for 10 minutes. So I'm going to set the timer 
for 10 minutes to let that cool. This was from part B. Okay, the timer's going. We'll let that cool for 10 minutes and then we'll make our observations. Okay, so back to iron three chloride, we added silver nitrate and it's an opaque, creamy, creamy yellow color. Let's go ahead and record that. Uh, so if you turn to page 54, it says result of adding the silver nitrate to the test tube um, solution. Let's put opaque yellow, opaque yellow. Now we are going to, or it, it calls for a, uh, a potassium ferrocyanide. You guys, because of that ending cyanide, I don't have that. So I'm just going to give you the answer to that. If we were to add um, that, and I'm sorry we don't because it would be a pretty reaction. If we were to have the potassium ferrocyanide, it would go a dark blue. So let's record that right now. And I apologize that I don't have that. It's a safety thing. Um, so I'm on page 54 where it says result of adding K4, Fe, parenthesis Cn, and parenthesis 6. You're going to put dark blue. We didn't get to see it, but it was dark blue. Um, that was step six, sorry, step five. Add two drops of ammonium thiocyanate. So here is ammonium thiocyanate. I'm going to get the, another little pipette. And with this test tube, so I haven't added anything to this, that's just the iron three chloride dissolved in water. Let's add our two drops of ammonium thiocyanate. See what happens. Oh, wow, that was awesome. Check that out. I'm going to put this one over here. Just don't want to get these mixed up. <gasps> that is a brilliant red. That is like a, a burgundy deep red. Can you see it against my shirt maybe? It's a red color, deep red. If I did it against the board, can you see that? No, it's a little bit hard to see from that distance. That is a red, 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 red color. So let's write that down, pretty neat, wow. So if I come back to page 54 where it says result of adding NH4 SCN, right, deep red. This is a dark red color, pretty cool, Ooh, nice. Okay. Um, Now, number seven, it says heat the other solid sample very gently just until it melts. This is best done by moving the test tube rack back and forth, or the test tube back and forth. I'm going to use my test tube holder. And here is our solid um, iron three chloride. And we are going to put this over our Bunsen burner. I'm just going to move it. I'm trying to melt it. Oh, wow, way interesting. It turned red. It's actually the same color as when we added the ammonium um, thiocyanate to it. Wow. So another deep red color. Let's go ahead and record that. So if we come back, um, this is going to be the melted sample where it says solution color, the melted sample write down red. So solution color just right across from that melted sample, put red. Okay, um, we did number seven. Now let's do number eight. It says allow the melted sample to cool for five minutes. Great, the sample might remain in the liquid form even when cool. You, now, um, you have now changed the sample by melting it and letting it cool. So they want us to number nine, add 30 drops of distilled water to the cool sample. So we're going to have to wait on that. Let's see how we're doing on cooling our copper carbonate. So let's see how much time we've got on that. Okay, we actually have five minutes for the copper carbonate and I now have five minutes to cool my iron three chloride. So let's let those keep cooling and you and I will go ahead and move on to part D. And when the timer dings, we'll come back and finish parts B and C. So part D, it says place approximately 0.1 gram of solid sodium bicarbonate 
uh, into two dry test tubes. So let me show you. Here I've got a white powder, little um, FYI, sodium hydrogen carbonate, bicarbonate, is just baking soda. Baking soda, yeah. So that's just baking soda, just white powder, what you'd use if you're making cookies or something like that, just a white powder. I weighed out 0.1 grams of each of those. Um, now it says add 30 drops of distilled water to one sample. So let's get my little pipette for water and we're going to count 30 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 30. Okay. Now dissolve this. So I'm going to mix this and keep reading. Test the solution formed in step two by adding six drops of a 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. Okay, it's dissolved, it's just clear. It just looks like a clear water. Uh, here is my 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. So let's get a new pipette. And we are supposed to add to this, I'm going to have to set this down a second. We are supposed to add to this six drops. Okay, six drops. So let me bring this over the sink, you guys. All right, so let's add our six drops of calcium nitrate into the sodium bicarbonate. One, two, three, four, six. Big fat nothing, big fat nothing. It's just clear, it's just clear. Let's go ahead and record that. No reaction, it's still just clear. Can I see where I put my pencil? There it is. So let's go to uh, page 54, I'm on part B. Color of the sample unreacted was white, it was a white powder. Uh, and then when it says result of adding calcium nitrate, it's clear. There was, I couldn't see any reaction. There was no evidence of a reaction. It's still just clear. Um, so let's now come back to step four. So I'm on part B, step four, and it says, you will attempt to change the second sample by reacting it with hydrochloric acid. Slowly and carefully add 15 drops of dilute six molar hydrochloric acid to the second solid sample. No solids should remain after the reaction stops. If a solid remains, continue with five more drops of DHCl. Okay, so let's see what happens. My HCl, I set it away from everything else. Here's my second sample of just that white powder, um, my baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate, and let's add the six drops to it. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me make sure it was, oh, excuse me, 15 drops. Okay, here we go, 15 drops. Let's see what happens. One. I want you to hear that. It's reacting, it's fizzing. One. Awesome, check that out, woo! That was kind of fun. So there was a reaction. <laughs> there is definitely a reaction. It evolved gas. You could hear it, the evolving gas, as it was reacting releasing those little gas bubbles. Let's go ahead and write that down. Uh, so we will come back to page 54 and let's see, color recovered solid. But you know, maybe we're not writing that down. Let's wait on that. Come back to number five. It says, evaporate the resulting solution from step four and recover the solid by the method described in step six of, of part A. So it just wants me to heat this up, drive off all the liquid and see what's left over. So we're gonna heat it up, evaporate any liquid that's in it, starting to boil. I'm hoping you can hear that as it's boiling. A little bit more time here. It's kind of forming a white powder 
on the inside of the test tube. So we're recovering the solid, getting rid of all of the liquid. Oh, I just heard that timer go off. I'm going to let this finish evaporating the liquid. I'm hoping you can see the steam too. So sorry you guys didn't get to do this. This is called wet chemistry, what we're doing, and it is a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for just a minute to cool. Hope, I'm hoping you can see this, the smoke, the steam coming off of that. Okay, our timer just went off, which means we can finish parts B and C. If you will go back with me to uh, part B. So we had done, I'm on part B where it says heating copper carbonate. Um, I'm on number five where it said allow the tube to cool for at least 10 minutes. Remember this is our copper to carbonate. Um, then on number six, it says test the sample which has been changed by heating by following the directions in step three. So step three is where we added the 15 drops of the HCl. So let's see what happens when we add 15 drops of HCl. Little side note, let me make sure. Cold for 10 minutes, so I can't feel it's, it's room temperature. It turned black when I heated it. Remember it was that really pretty seafoam green? Well, when we heated it, it turned black. So let's add the HCl. And we're wondering, is it going to look like that beautiful green color? Is it going to match? Or will it look like something different? Okay, here we go. When we heated it, did it undergo a chemical reaction and change the chemical composition? So I'll do it right here for you. Here we go. I need to be able to see it. One. Okay, there's 15 drops hoping you can hear that. It's fizzing and it's green. It's a green color. But we'll see, we'll let it finish reacting and then we'll compare if it's the same green. How interesting. I, I wouldn't have guessed that you guys. How interesting. Kind of fun. Let me show you. Guess what? <laughs> it's identical. It's identical green. So heating it up, that was just a physical change. It's identical green. It looks exactly the same. Turned black, which was probably an oxidation. And then we put the HCl, it reacted and it brought it back to its, or, or not even, it was just um, probably took on, it burned it is what it is. But then when you put the HCl, it brought it back to its original chemical, chemical composition. Wow, wouldn't have guessed that. It's green, green, green. Let's record that. So come back to B, that was on page 53. So uh, the heated sample color um, was black. When we cooked it, it was black, but then when we added the HCl to what had been heated, it went back to green. Super interesting, kind of cool. Now let's finish part C. So the directions on part C, we have to let this cool. I'm on part C step eight. It said allow the melted sample to cool for five minutes. Let me make sure it's cool. Okay, this is my melted sample. The test tube's cool. All right, so it's cooled. Um, the sample might remain as a liquid. It is still a liquid, it's cooled, but it is a liquid, it's not a solid. You may need to change the sample by melting it and letting it cool. It says add 30 drops of distilled water to the cool sample and shake until the sample dissolves completely. All right, so remember when we heated this, it went a, a beautiful red color. Let's add water to it, see what happens. We're going to do our 30 drops of water. Okay, so I added my 30 drops of water, let me Mix it. Interesting. Yellow. It started out yellow. Uh, we cooked it. It melted into that brilliant red and it is back to a yellow. And it's a clear yellow too. It's not opaque. It's a, you can see through it yellow. 
Uh, let's see if we record that. I'm going to set this down just a minute and go back to page 54 in part C. Um, okay, this part we didn't have to record. Let's go um, to step... Okay, so now on number nine, I added my 30 drops of water. It says add drops of water so you need to dissolve. Note and record the color of the resulting solution in table 4.5 under melted sample. So 4.5 under melted sample. Oh, sorry you guys, I had you put, I had you put red, erase that. Let me show you really quick. So where it says melted sample, right here, that's where we're supposed to put this next yellow. So it, it'll actually say yellow and yellow. So right here, it says melted sample on solution, put yellow. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, so we finished number nine, number 10. Test the solution made from the melted sample the same way you did in steps three through six. So let's go back to step three. Um, we are going to add two drops silver nitrate, um, which means I'm going to need a couple of test tubes to do this. I'm going to use these test tubes. So I'm going to pour just a little bit um, of this. Remember we had to pour 10 drops into two other test tubes. I'm going to pour 10 drops into this test tube. Nice. And so I'm going to add our, let's see how many drops of silver nitrate? Two. Two drops of silver nitrate. One, two, and sure enough, it's a cloudy yellow. It matches this one. They're both the cloudy yellow. They're both that cloudy yellow color. Let me show you against the red of my iPad. It definitely cloudy, cloudy yellow. Here's clear yellow. You can't even see it against the red. And then there's cloudy yellow. You can definitely see it against the red. Cool. Okay, so let's record that. It's cloudy yellow. Um, so result of adding the silver nitrate to this solution is also going to be that opaque, or you could put cloudy, that's totally fine, yellow. Nice. Now let's do the ammonium thiocyanate, and that was two drops. Okay, my ammonium thiocyanate is right here. Let's do two drops into this one. One, two. Oh, yep. Beautiful red color. Beautiful red. Beautiful red color. Can you see that? A really pretty red color. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So let's go back to page 54 and we're going to write deep red. Deep red. Now again, on our uh, potassium thiocyanate, I apologize, don't have that. Uh, if we were to add it, it would also be a dark blue. So on page 54, where it says result of adding K4-FeCN6, put dark blue. Nice. Okay, good. So you should have all of table 4.1, all of table 4.3, um, all of table 4.5 completely done. So now we can go back to our sodium carbonate. Um, so the sodium bicarbonate, remember it was the white powder and, uh, let me pull this up for you, I had heated that, we added the HCl to it, heated it, it's cooled now, and it has this like white powder around it. We wanted to drive off all the liquid to bring it back to the solid, to reconstitute the solid. Let me find what step we're at, everybody. So we did step five, evaporate the solution. Um, and then it says when we cover the solid, okay, we did that. Record the color, it's white is white. So let's go to table 4.7. 
and the recovered sample is white. So I'm on part B, table 4.7, color sample under recovered solid, it's white. Now it says on number seven, uh, test the resulting solution by adding six drops of the calcium nitrate. So here is my calcium nitrate. I'm going to set that down for a moment. I'll go ahead and get some, get six drops. And here it is. Okay, let's see what happens. We're going to put six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to just throw this around with my solid. Super interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Swirling that around, it is identical to the first one. This first one, we had the sodium bicarbonate added the calcium nitrate to it, nothing. It's clear, no reaction. Same thing, clear, it just looks like water. They, they just look like water. Okay, so let's write that down. Page 54, where it says under part D, uh, result of adding sodium nitrate to dissolve sample underneath reco uh, recovered solid, right, clear. Yeah, nothing. Okay, nice. Almost done, we have one more part. And you're going to love this part. So it's part E, combustion of magnesium. It says obtain two three centimeter strips of magnesium ribbon. So here's my magnesium ribbon. They're just little pieces of metal. Yeah, they call it ribbon, but it's like a strip of metal. There you go. Um, and let's see here. Record the appearance. They're shiny. It just looks like shiny metal. So I'm going to come to page uh, 54 where it says appearance of sample before it's a shiny gray. A shiny gray. Uh, it says place one strip in a small 10 centimeter test tube and cautiously add 10 drops of dilute six molar HCl. Okay, so I'm going to to get this to fit in the test tube, I am going to kind of wrap this in a little circle. And then I might put this in the bottom of a test tube. So I have that shiny metal in the bottom of a test tube. You can maybe barely see it. And now we're going to add our HCl. I have to read again how many drops it said. We are going to add 10 drops. Okay. Here we go, you guys, get ready. I'm hoping you can hear that and see it is really reacting. <laughs> oh, oh, I so wish you guys could see this close up. It, the bubbles are so fierce, it actually lifts up the metal really reacting and ooh, it is hot touching it down there whoo very exothermic hot 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 um produced a lot of um condensation on it too so definitely a, re a reaction with that nice well, let's see what we need to record on this um, it says result of adding HCl. Um, so the result is there was a reaction and it evolved gas. Now I only added a handful of drops so it didn't consume all of the metal. If I had added a lot, it would have consumed all of it, but there's still metal left in here. So let's put down result of adding HCl that um, it evolved gas. So there was definitely a chemical reaction um, that it produced a new substance that produced a gas. Next step, 
It said, grasp one end of the other strip with your crucible tongs and hold the strip in the flame of your burner until the magnesium ignites. Oh, you guys are going to love this, so watch closely. And then it says to cl collect the combustion product, being careful to exclude any unburned material and record the appearance, okay? And then we're going to add the HCl to that. I'm going to get this test tube ready to do that. And I'm going to rinse this one out. I was one test tube short, you guys. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so I have my test tube ready to go. I have my other piece of metal. There it is. And let me show you my crucible tongs. These are crucible tongs right there. I'm going to hold just the very end of this and I'm going to put it in, in the flame. So let's see what happens when I put this metal in the flame. It takes it just a little bit to ignite. Look at that, woo! <laughs> it's, it's going to blind you. Nice, nice. Now I carefully <laughs> take this this top part didn't burn. I don't want that in there. I should have had the test tube ready to go. Okay. So, in fact, you know what? I am going to have a little bit that didn't burn. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to set this on fire. And then I'm going to have the test tube close to put it in. Um, I don't know if you could see it or not. After it burned, it changed from that really pretty shiny to a white. It looked like white ashes, white ashes. Let me burn this last little bit of metal that was underneath the crucible tongs. So again, super bright, woohoo! After it's done burning, it's this white ash. I'm gonna put that in the test tube. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to add the six drops of the HCl again. Let me make sure it was, oh, it's 10 drops, excuse me. 10 drops of the six molar HCl. All right, here we go. So 10 drops. One, two, three. Oh, wow. So also definitely evolving gas. Yeah. Nice. Now there is a difference between this one and the other one. Very interesting. Kind of fun that you can see this. Um, so the other one, when I put the HCl in with the uh, magnesium ribbon, the metal, it evolved gas, but the liquid was clear. This one, it evolved gas, but the liquid is a cloudy white. So the end liquid is a little bit different. Let's record both of those. Uh, if you'll go to page 54 for me, please. Um, where it says before combustion evolved gas, would you please also write clear liquid? And now after combustion, combustion appearance of the sample is a white ash. White ash. And then we added the HCl to it. It also evolved gas but it has a cloudy liquid. A cloudy liquid, okay, good. And there is our lab. Uh, everything else you will need to complete. So all the tables that say report, you're going to, repeat, uh, you're going to complete. You need to complete the pre-lab, which is on pages 52, and, excuse me, 51 and 52. And then you're going to do the reports for 53 through 55, and then there are some questions. And the questions start on page 55 and end on 56. So do next time in class, you will have completed pages 51 through 56. You'll tear those out, staple it, put your name on it, and you can turn that in your folder. So good work. Thank you for being with me doing this lab. Again, I'm sorry that you didn't get to do the hands on yourself because it was fun. Um, have a good day and I'm so proud of you. Thanks for working so hard. Bye.